do in its place is to say, we give you a two-year phase in to, 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 to sign up, to be on. Insurance is now portable because we've delinked employment and health insurance. It will travel with you, uh, but you have to stay on. And if you don't stay on, then you're not eligible for the price uh, subsidy, if you want to call it that, that exists in terms of pre-existing condition. You, I suppose you might be able to buy it on some third-party aftermarket, but it would cost you a lot more. There's got to be an incentive at some level for, for, for good behavior from the standpoint of actually signing up, which is what Obamacare was trying to do, but I think it did it in a fundamentally flawed way. I, I want to add just one thing to that. How do people are always saying this, okay, I've got a $1,000 tax bill, so I can't take a $5,000 tax credit, you know what I mean? Or I have no tax bill, so I'm working class and don't pay enough in taxes to really do much with the tax credit. The big part of this is, as uh, uh, Congressman Sanford said, is a marketplace. And I'll give you an example. There were two things in ophthalmology not covered by insurance, but the price went down every year, LASIK surgery and contact lenses. Initially, contact lenses might cost you $300. And then at the end, when I was still practicing, you get them for like a couple of dollars a piece. I mean, it's incredibly cheap to buy disposable contact lenses now because of a marketplace. So when you develop health savings accounts, let's say right now 4% of the public has a health savings account. What if 30% of the public had a health savings account? What do you do when you spend your own money? You call up doctors and you ask the price. The average person that gets LASIK surgery calls four doctors and they ask the price of every doctor. Try calling a doctor in America and asking the price of a gallbladder surgery. Nobody knows. It's complicated. The insurance is in between. But if you develop a real marketplace, it will drive prices down. So even though the tax credit may not help everybody, driving prices down will, and you get a real marketplace. And the other thing is, is if you are a good saver, even of modest income, there are people who have modest income who save, put it in a health savings account, it will help them, and it also saves them on premiums. In a real marketplace, the higher deductible you choose, the more like catastrophic you choose, the lower your premium. That's the way the market works. In Obamacare, we gave people $6,000 deductibles and enormous premiums. You got no real discount. They got rid of the entire concept of insurance giving you a discount for being more responsible with your payments. We bring that back into play. So there's enormous market forces, and we believe in the market and everything else, everything else that's sold in every store, every other service except for health care. Let's get what made America great, which was capitalism and free markets, and put it in health care. Yes, sir, just to be clear, if if Congress passes the 2015 repeal bill and Congress passes this bill, assuming a two-year transition, Congress can basically say our work is done and we can move on to other things. Yeah, I, th I think it's incumbent upon us to go ahead and get it done because what we have is a reconciliation vehicle right now that we can't start the tax reform, the 2018 budget, or the reconciliation process that even looks at tax reform until we deal with that. And that's one of the reasons why we're acting today to say, let's debate the merits uh, of this particular plan and, and let's start doing that in earnest. I think the second part of that is that when, when you, you truly look at, at where we are today uh, with regards to a replacement plan. Uh, it's incumbent upon us to look at, at every aspect of the health care market. I, I can tell you, I'm on Obamacare, and my deductibles are so incredibly high uh, that it, it's functionally obsolete unless I get some kind of catastrophic. We've been talking uh, among the members of including a catastrophic uh, option out there that you could buy out of your HSAs. Uh, and so as we look at that, it's, it's important that we go ahead and repeal and replace. It would be our preference to have a vote on this particular bill uh, within uh, the days of a re uh, repeal vote. And yet, at the same time, we've got to decide this before we move on. And, and sir, is there consensus among conservatives that Cassidy Collins is a non-starter? Uh, you know, I, I want to make sure that I thank publicly uh, Senator Collins and Dr. Cassidy for starting the debate. I mean, uh, I, I can tell you that it is tough. The minute you put anything on paper, now it won't be that we don't have a plan. It'll be the merits of that plan. And that's where the debate should be. And they started that. And then Dr. Paul uh, came right on the heels of that. Uh, we believe that the, the Collins-Cassidy plan uh, 
really just institutionalizes the Affordable Care Act in some ways uh, that says if you like your Obamacare, you can keep it. And, uh, and it's not a conservative. In fact, I don't know of many conservatives that support that position. Thank you. Um, is the Freedom Caucus uh, dead set on repealing the Medicaid expansion? And are you prepared to work with Senate Republicans who want to keep the, the uh, Medicaid expansion in some form? Uh, the Freedom Caucus's position is, is yes, that we need to repeal that. That's our official position. And yet, at the same time, as you see with these plans, there are components of not only uh, health savings accounts, but how do we help those that uh, need a safety net in terms of a replacement plan and working with them. So I think it's incumbent that we repeal everything first and then work on a real replacement. Because if not, when you conflate the two, uh, the debate gets far too complex and the danger of not accomplishing anything becomes far too But real. your replacement has nothing about Medi keeping the Medicaid. It, it's more from an HSA standpoint and, and being able to empower those. But as, as we look at that, one of the things that we have taken a firm position on is the Medicaid expansion is, is certainly to repeal that. Yes. Um, Senator Paul, you said yesterday that Republicans shouldn't spend too much time investigating the White House because it distracts from this very debate. But you've been able to come up with a pretty specific plan. Why can't Republicans do both? Well, you know, part of us coming up with our plan, I can thank uh, Congressman Tom Price, because a lot of the bills were his and put forward and have been supported by conservatives throughout, you know, the years. In fact, that's why I think ours is a consensus bill. Ours is a bill that takes some of the things that Republicans almost all agree to. We don't take the controversial stuff. There's disagreement on the Medicaid expansion. There's disagreement on uh, refundable tax credits. So we left that out, and that's going to be addressed in repeal. So I think we can do this and our work. My comments on the investigation are is I don't want a political investigation. If law enforcement thinks there needs to be an investigation based on law enforcement type of facts, they make that decision. But we don't need more political investigation up here. Last question. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the back. Hi. Um, so in terms of under the replacement, uh, what will be the status of the birth control and contraception mandate that's currently under the ACA, specifically uh, has how it prevents women from having to pay co-pays for their birth control? You know, really, most of the conservative members or pro-life members uh, who have, have looked at that particular issue uh, with regards to taxpayer funds not being used for th things that pot potentially, and so let's take the defund Planned Parenthood uh, aspect of that, uh, that we don't believe that taxpayer funds should be used for that. And so as you look at, at the empowerment of uh, some of those particular issues, the HSAs, when they become personal money, when it's, and that's one of the issues from a refundable tax credit, it's, it's actually the HSAs are your personal money, then those are individual decisions that a patient can make uh, with them. Uh, but I think the, the real component there is, is the difference between uh, taxpayer subsidy uh, versus versus actually a personal's uh, own individual money. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Ashton Kutcher testified on Capitol Hill about ending modern slavery and human trafficking. That's next on C-SPAN. Then President Trump holds a joint news conference with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. Later, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi weighs in on the resignation of Michael Flynn. The Senate will vote.